And remember Bob Harper, the trainer on The Biggest Loser? As he's living his second life on a completely different diet than he did in his first. In his first, carbs were the devil and they made you fat. But then after consulting with Sinus, for his second life, he's living on super carbs. Hi friends, let me share with you the number one group of nutrients that has been shown to prevent cancers, Supermax. There are thousands of Supermax that you can get from a spoonful of the right food. Now, there are lots of different whole foods with lots of different Supermax to protect your DNA. But don't confuse Supermax with Big Macs or mac and cheese. Those foods actually raise your inflammation, contributing to aging DNA. Whereas Supermax are microbiota accessible carbohydrates, which are a group of sugars related to the fibers that make up the leaves of kale, the covers of seeds, the cotton in your clothes, and the wood that holds up your house. Obviously, you have to eat the right plant fibers to lower inflammation. Even amongst plants, only certain ones contain high amounts of super molecules that are antioxidant rich phytonutrients. So, Let's start with flax seeds. I eat these daily and so does my 90 plus year old mother-in-law. Now I lived with her for eight years. And whenever I went on a shopping trip, the food she always asked me to buy was flax seeds, but it had to be ground up. I have here whole flax seeds. Have you ever tried chewing on this? You aren't gonna be able to digest through whole flax seeds unless you pressure cook this thing. It's worth buying whole and then grinding fresh flax seeds into a powder as they are high in unsaturated fats and therefore are prone to getting rancid. So I should cover this up. Now, if you don't want your nuts and seeds to get rancid, keep them away from oxygen and store them in an airtight jar in the refrigerator. Flax seeds are packed with cancer-preventing anti-inflammatory lignans, which, by the way, is a phytoestrogen known to reduce the risk of breast cancer by 20 to 30 percent. Now, I think flax seeds should be a part of any healthy anti-cancer diet. There is a pro-inflammatory cancer-promoting molecule in everybody's body called IL-1. Your body makes receptors that against IL-1 called IL-1 receptor antagonist to stop cancer growth. Now, cancer chemotherapy like tamoxifen and all natural flax seeds, about 25 grams, they both can increase your body's ability to stop cancer by making IL-1 receptor antagonist. Hence, I eat flax seeds daily. One tablespoon of flax seed is three grams worth of max, and those lignans turn those max into super max. Now, max are packed in many foods like blueberries, which is another food essential to any diet centered on cancer prevention. They're full of unique antioxidants called anthocyanins that give it that brilliant blue color and makes the 3.6 grams of max per cup super max. Blueberries are so anti-inflammatory that professional athletes, they use them to help with recovery. Now, do you play pickleball? Did you know that the blueberry is their official fruit? Now, I don't play pickleball, but I do eat blueberries every day to control my weight and reduce inflammation. Now, the max and blueberries, they get fermented by your gut microbes to make metabolic byproducts like acetic acid, which activate an enzyme called AMP kinase to help you lower sugars, which lowers insulin and ultimately helps with weight loss. On top of that, the max themselves increase satiety, slows down the absorption of sugars and traps cholesterol, estrogen, and toxins that get removed when you have a bowel movement. And in addition, your gut microbes, they transform max into anti-inflammatory molecules like butyrate that further reduces blood sugar. Butyrate is a powerful immune signaling molecule that secures a tight junction between intestinal cells to prevent inflammatory molecules from leaking into their tissues and provides energy for your colonic cells so you can have satisfying and regular bowel movements. In addition, it provides feedback to your liver to stop making glucose by dampening a process called gluconeogenesis. Now, have you ever bitten into the stem of a cabbage or asparagus or a really hard almond and you knew that there was no way you could chew through that without breaking some teeth? How about popcorn kernels? If you chew these, you might have a bad time, like your teeth will shift or crack or whatever. That's all made of fiber, even though they feel like rocks. Now, people obviously can't digest grass like cattle, clothes like moths, or wood like termites. And even if you could chew through that kind of fiber, you couldn't extract the sugars. And the only reason why you can't digest fibrous carbohydrates, even if they went through a blender, is because you don't have the right enzymes. You also lack the right microbes with the enzymes. These enzymes are called cellulases that break the beta bonds that stitch the glucose together. And you may be surprised that the glucose that you measure on your blood sugar test is the same 
same glucose that makes the MAC cellulose. Now, cellulose is the most abundant organic polymer on earth found in all plants and used to make your clothes, furniture, homes, and inside your body when you eat whole plants. And the purpose of cellulose is to trap and remove toxins because you don't have the enzymes to break the beta bonds or the stitches that hold the chain of glucose together. But MACs by themselves are not enough to protect your DNA. And that's why adding fiber to soda is not going to improve your health and block fat, nor is adding fiber to bread and health bars. Now, whether new products are launched across the ocean or in our backyard, processed products pretending to be food, about 15,000 of them every year, will forever tempt you to make poorer dietary choices with the consequences of leaving your DNA unprotected, which puts you at high risk for cancer. Have you seen what's in the drinking water, food, or the air you breathe? Toxins are invisible. Pretty scary stuff. And the good news is your body is hardwired with machinery to help you detox and repair, but they need the right tools to do so. And these tools are abundant in certain whole plant foods. Just like the soldiers in Ukraine, the right supplies can make a huge difference in their effectiveness to fight. Are you supplying your immune soldiers with Supermax on a daily basis in your fight against cancer? If it isn't part of your daily routine, then you probably don't realize you have millions of potential cancer cells every day. And under the right conditions, it only takes one to take off and give you cancer. Now, you can imagine it's pretty hard to find a colony of cancer cell unless it grows really big. And this is why by the time of diagnosis, most people have had cancer for many, many years. And by that time, food alone may not be enough to make them go away. You are surrounded by carcinogens no matter where you live. And in America, we take clean water for granted, but we shouldn't because 45% of the tap water is full of forever chemicals known as PFA or PFAS, which were once thought as benign, but are now recognized as harmful carcinogens that accumulate in our bodies. And over and over, chemicals thought to be benign turn up to be deadly. Your fireplace, um, cigarettes, and barbecue grills are all toxic when you light it up. Dioxins, unlike vinyl chloride, stay in the environment for a long time and can affect your food chain and concentrate in plants and animals, especially in the fatty tissue. Actually, more than 90% of human exposure is through the intake of animal fats, mainly meat, dairy products, fish and shellfish. And this is another example of how science lags behind the reality of living. These compounds are among the most toxic compounds we know. He's right. The bad news is these chemicals can double our risk or worse of some terrible cancers. And it's not just forever chemicals that you should be worrying about, especially if you drink groundwater. 7% of well water is full of arsenic, which is a potent carcinogen. Arsenic is not just in your water. Many foods have arsenic, especially white rice. Arsenic accumulates in your body and will get trapped in keratin-rich tissue like your skin, your hair, your nails. But you can also accumulate it in your liver, your kidneys, your heart, your lungs, and it can cause lung bladder, skin, kidney, liver, and prostate cancer. But brown rice has 80% more arsenic than white rice. Yes, I know, that's another complication. Unfortunately, rice just absorbs 10 times more arsenic than any other grain. And because of this, you just can't buy any rice on the market. Arsenic not only causes cancer by damaging your DNA, it can suppress your immunity and make you more insulin resistant. There is really no acceptable level of arsenic in our food and water, period. But unfortunately, our government allows arsenic in all our foods, including baby foods and juices. You can also inhale arsenic from sawdust and the smoke of a barbecue grill or cigarettes, or you can eat it in white rice and seafood or drink it in contaminated water, especially if you live in Taiwan, Bangladesh, Western South America, and the Western United States. And on top of that, if your diet is centered around rice and seafood, like most Asians, you are at elevated risk of getting cancer. And we know that the most important stage of life to reduce the risk of cancer is in childhood. What you eat and don't eat as a child can set you up for cancer several decades later. Now, the good news is there are ways to reduce the exposure of arsenic and other toxins in your water with a good water filter like this. I bought this filter for my son in college and literally will travel with it. And when I travel out of the country, I will make sure to never eat ice, rinse my mouth with 
with tap water after brushing my teeth, swim in pools, or wash my face with tap water. The best way to reduce your daily risk of arsenic is to limit foods that concentrate arsenic like rice. And by the way, organic rice doesn't make a difference. So rinsing your rice can remove 10% of the arsenic. So yes, soak and rinse your rice before you cook it. Just know that when you are soaking and rinsing, you're essentially throwing out the baby in this example, the vitamin B1 with the bath water because vitamin B1 is a water soluble vitamin, but you can easily supplement. It's more important not to eat arsenic. And when you cook your rice, if you cook one cup of rice, use six cups of water and then dump the water and then you can heat it to whatever dryness you want. This removes an additional 40 to 60% of the arsenic. Sure, you can reduce 60% of the arsenic if you cook your rice at home, but that's not happening in restaurants, nor is it happening in processed foods. And really the arsenic is so much lower and the nutrition is so much higher in other grains that I don't even think it's worth eating rice. But I know everyone likes that mouthfeel of rice. So here's a trick that I discovered to make quinoa feel like rice. Cook a cup of quinoa as directed and towards the last few minutes, pour in a quarter cup of thick cut rolled oats and let it cool until the whole thing solidifies like rice. By using quinoa and oats, you will eat grains much richer in protein and soluble fiber than white rice. The reality is we are all exposed to various degrees of toxin all the time. And that is why it's important to eat super nutrients that have been shown to reverse DNA damage. And did you know that something as common as turmeric was tested in people exposed to high levels of drinking water arsenic in Bangladesh and it reversed DNA damage. Now for acute exposure, you should see your medical doctor as there are prescription chelating agents that can bind to arsenic. However, there's no official recommendation for the rest of us exposed to arsenic every day in our food. Now, I don't think the argument that arsenic is all natural is acceptable, that it contaminates our food and water supply, especially since everyone is wondering why young people are getting more cancers. To me, it's akin to the N95 shortage in 2020. We were told to show up at work with a scarf, despite the fact that there is a stockpile of masks and published data on how effective protective respirator masks could be made at home since 2006. Unfortunately, thousands of healthcare workers, they didn't get that data and neither did the people who told us to go to work with a scarf. Needless to say, exposure to toxins on a daily basis is a huge challenge for all of us. And that's why I like to take a proactive approach to my health and minimize foods that collect arsenic. And I take a daily supplement with turmeric extract. If you want to know what I take, I have a link in the show notes below. And even if you have the best water filters and grow your own organic foods, you're still inhaling air pollution, which is the second risk factor of death behind high blood pressure. And I like to emphasize that high blood pressure is a leading risk factor for death. And 50% of people watching YouTube, you guys have high blood pressure. And you don't even realize that's the second leading cause of chronic kidney disease. And it's really sad that most Americans, they have to take two or more blood pressure medicines and they still can't get their blood pressure under control. And honestly, this is because blood pressure is a diet and lifestyle problem. And if you don't fix your diet and lifestyle, no amount of medicine can replace that. But medicines, they are a useful and necessary bridge to prevent some catastrophic event until you can get your diet and lifestyle correct. If you're concerned and worried about cancer and you don't fix your high blood pressure, then you are underestimating a huge risk factor for melanoma, kidney, liver, pancreas, cervix, endometrial cancer. Hence, a good diet is to normalize blood pressure, blood sugar, insulin, blood lipids to help maintain good blood flow, and a healthy weight that all lower your risk of cancer. And if it doesn't achieve all these measures, you may want to rethink your diet. People have gone viral preaching repetitive fad diets that give partial short-term benefits for decades. With the 30-somethings on the left that died way too young, which advocates a diet centered on full-fat animal foods, the younger two died of liver and brain cancers. And remember Bob Harper, the trainer on The Biggest Loser? You may wonder why Bob Harper is here, because he's not dead anymore. Dead anymore? What does that mean? He explains it in the book he wrote, In His Second Life. February 12th, 2017 is a day I don't remember at all, and a day I won't ever forget. I died that day in a gym in my New York neighborhood. Sounds dramatic, but it's very much a true story. What makes Bob so fascinating is he's living his second life on a completely different diet than he did in his first. 
In his first, carbs were the devil and they made you fat. But then after consulting with Sinus, for his second life, he's living on super carbs. So why are carbs super? Because they have super nutrients coupled to max that are super molecules. But you won't get these super max when you eat foods that aren't whole food, whether they are plant-based or not. And if you want to learn more about super mac whole foods, watch the next video.